everyone. This lesson is going to be on work. And as we can see in the first bullet point here, it's relationship with energy. We chatted a little bit about energy already, talked about different kinds of energy, kinetic energy, potential energy, and then subcategories of those as well, like nuclear potential energy, chemical potential energy, gravitational potential energy, energy due to motion, mechanical energy, thermal energy. Here we can see though that energy is the ability to uh, do some work and work is the transfer of energy. So if we do take, for example, gravitational potential energy and use the flowing of water to turn a turbine, then we have the transfer of energy and some work has then be done. So energy, yes, is the ability to do work and work is the transfer of energy. Work, as we can see, is related to the amount of force that is exerted and the distance over which it is exerted. And this is going to allow us to come up with the first equation that we're going to use here, some calculations related to work, force, and distance. So I give you some variables here, some variables and some variable symbols. So first of all, all of these here, we'll call those the, well, they are the variable symbols. And we're going to use those in our first equation. And these other ones here, they are the variable names for each one of those symbols. So it is a capital W for work, a capital W for force, and a lowercase d for distance. And this triangle in front, triangle is for delta. And that just means the change in. So the change in the distance. So typically we have a distance. We'll say our initial distance that we have here is D1. And the final distance, we'll call it D2, or rather position. And between these would be the change in distance. So the change in distance in this case would then be the D2, if that's the final position, minus the D1, that's our change in distance. So I have a couple of relationships at the bottom here. This uh, funny symbol in the middle, it means proportional to. And what this says is that work is proportional, directly proportional to force. So the greater the force, the more work is going to be done. And it's a similar proportional relationship between distance and work. The further the distance an object has been moved, again, the greater the amount of work that will have been done. So then we can derive this equation here, where work is equal to force times the change in distance. So we don't actually see the multiplication sign here, but we usually don't write it. It's right in between here, and there is a multiplication. So sometimes we will also see this as force, our work is equal to force times delta D. You'll also see it as this sometimes force, and then just a big dot here. This big dot does mean multiplication times the change in D. But all of these here, they are going to be the same thing. I just want to uh, refer you to your data sheet as well, if I can just go out of here for a minute. This is the back of your periodic table, your data sheet, and uh, these are the physics formulas, of course, that we see at the upper right-hand side here. And about two-thirds of the way down, we see the one that we're talking about right now. W equals F delta D tells us on the right-hand side what each of those different variables are. So it tells us that W is the symbol for work. And it also gives us the unit. So you do want to sort of keep this straight. There's the variable symbol, there's the variable name, and then there are the units for that particular variable. So for work, the symbol for work for that variable is W, capital W. The variable name is work. And the variable units for work are either newtons times meters or joules. So I'll be talking more about that as well. It is kind of important to keep it straight, though. What is the variable symbol? What is the variable name? And what are the variable units? So 
So let's go ahead and take a look at those units. So yeah, work again is equal to force times distance. The units for force are units of newtons. And the standard units that we use in physics for distance, the units are meters. So kind of keep in mind that there are many, many other units that we can use to measure distance. You might be given kilometers, you might be given centimeters, you might be given nanometers, but quite often what you will have to do is convert it into the standard unit that we do use, and that is going to be the meter. I also have down below here, um, what exactly is a Newton? Well, a Newton is equal to kilograms times meters divided by seconds squared. So if I just write that again over the side here, kilograms times meters in the numerator divided by, remember, this horizontal line here, it's not just a fraction, it does actually mean divide. So the numerator divided by the denominator, and the denominator seconds squared really means that seconds times seconds, that is seconds squared. So that is also a Newton. So we have Newtons, the name for the symbol for force. We have the individual units further broken down for Newtons. And then on the right hand side, we have our units for measuring distance, meters, and we have the symbol for that, of course, which is the lowercase m. So if we do multiply those together, because of course work is equal to force times distance, so Newtons times meters are the units that you might be given for work. But we can also multiply these two together, and then we just end up with this one here. So all we've done is taken this meters here, put another one in, so times meters, and that just makes it now meters squared. So kilograms times meters squared divided by seconds squared, those are the units for work, or simply Newton times meters, or Newton meters. So this is all kind of complicated, of course, keeping all of this straight. Fortunately, we can use one single letter to represent the units for energy and work, and those are units of joules. So one joule, in fact, is equal to one kilogram times meter squared divided by second squared, or one newton meter. So obviously it's quite often much easier to talk in terms of joules than to talk in terms of kilograms times meter squared per second squared or newtons times meters. So let's get in to take a look at a couple of uh, sample problems here. And what I want to do with you is model how I would go ahead and actually solve uh, one of these problems. So we've talked a little bit about using GRASP. So GRASP G is the given information. Read the problem, take a look at the numbers and the units that you have, and then figure it out what is it that you're actually given. That is the G. So we're given 405 joules, so we can write that down, 405 joules. But then the question might be, what is this the units for? So I'm actually going to go back to our data sheet here temporarily. And if you're not sure, you can always take a look along the right-hand side here and find what it is that you're looking for. So here we have it right here. Joules, in fact, is for work. So we are given information for the amount of work that has been performed. The other piece of information that we have is in Newtons. And again, if you're not sure, you can go to the data sheet. You can just run up and down here looking for, oh, here we are, Newtons. Newtons, the units are force. I'll also just kind of point out here, it has an arrow up above force. I haven't talked about this yet. We'll talk about this in the next, uh, next lesson. But that arrow up above means that force is a vector, and that means that it has a direction. Whereas mass, it doesn't have an arrow up above. It is what we call a scalar. A scalar does not have a direction associated with it whereas a vector does have a direction associated with it, and force has a direction. It might be up, down, to the right, to the left, east, west, but there is a direction that is associated with it. So let's write down the other given information that we have here then. So we have our 6,322 newtons. And again, what do these represent? So this is the way that we write it down. Don't just tell me the numbers. 
and make sure you always, 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 all throughout, and I can't stress this enough, are giving me the units. So we determined this is for work. We have 405 joules. That is the amount of work that has been performed. The 6,333 newtons is for force, and I'll put an arrow above here since that's what I did show on the data sheet. So this is now our given information. R is the required information. What are we trying to figure out? Well, it says that right here. We're trying to determine the distance moved. So that is our delta D question mark because that's what we're trying to figure out. So what I'm looking for with the given information is for you to give me the variable symbol. I need to know what it is. You're giving me a number four. Tell me what that corresponding number is. And of course, don't mix them up. You need to read carefully. So you tell me that work is the 405, not the 6,322, and units for that particular variable, incredibly important as well. So now the equation directly from the data sheet is force, oh, sorry, work is equal to force times our distance. But of course, we already know the work. We're given the work. We're given the force. These two we have. What we're trying to find is the change in distance. So unfortunately for this example, it's not as simple as plugging in the numbers. We actually need to rearrange this equation. We need to get the change in distance on its own, which means we need to get force over to the other side. Various different ways to go about doing this. This is the way I'll show you this time around. It doesn't have a denominator for these, but there really is a denominator and it is just one. So if I want to get rid of force on the right-hand side, the only way that I can do that, if it is in the denominator, or sorry, in the numerator, then I'm going to multiply, or sorry, I'm going to divide by it in the denominator. So by doing that, they cancel out. If it's in the numerator and the denominator, they cancel out. But the rule is whatever you do to one side of the equal sign, what I did on the right-hand side, I need to do to the left-hand side as well. On the right-hand side, I divided by force, so on the left-hand side, I'm going to divide by force as well. So now I've removed force from the right-hand side. Delta D is on its own. I'm just going to tidy it up a little bit, and I'm going to put delta D on the left-hand side, and our work divided by force. I'm going to put that over on the right-hand side. So now that I've rearranged this equation, now I can go ahead and plug in the numbers that I do have that I've written for the given information. So the amount of work, again, is the 405 joules. Once again, make sure that you're always, always, always putting in the units and keeping track of the units throughout 6,322 newtons that we have. So if you go ahead and you plug these numbers into your calculator, what you do end up with, I'll write a number of digits here, 0 0.0640. Zero, six, and that's as far as I'll go right now. Uh, significant digits. Don't forget about sig digs. How many significant digits are we going to have? Well, if we take a look at our original numbers, each of them go to the nearest uh, one place. So that means that those are both the same degree of precision. This one has four significant digits. This one has three significant digits. We're going to go by the lower number. We're going to round our final answer to three significant digits, works, which works out to 0 0.0641. Meters. I can also, of course, write this in scientific notation. Scientific notation, we want to move this decimal so it's between the six and the four. It's after the first non-zero digit. So then it would be 6.41 times 10 to the 2 meters. So you might say, how does this give us meters when we have joules divided by newtons? So just off to the side here, this was what I'm going to write. Remember that joules are equal to kilograms times meter squared divided by second squared. And we're dividing that by our newtons. Let me just backtrack a little bit further here and put this down as the work. 
joules the units for work, as force, newtons the units for force, and we saw on a previous slide that joules are really kilograms times meter squared divided by second squared, and newtons are really kilograms times meters divided by second squared. So it's all getting kind of messy here. Let me grab a different color because it's getting so messy. And let's take a look at what cancels out. So this is really our line now that's dividing this entire equation, the numerator from the denominator. So we can see that in the numerator, we have kilograms. In the denominator, we have kilograms. They cancel out. In that denominator at the top, we have second squared. Denominator at the bottom, we have second squared. They cancel out. We have meters at the top and meters at the bottom, but it's meters squared at the top. So the squared cancels out. We get rid of one of them. We get rid of the one at the bottom, and that's why we are left with what we should have, what we're looking for, which is the distance in meters. So whenever you're solving those questions, always make sure that you're using grasp. I didn't do the P there, the paraphrase, but all of the other information was a uh, given in solving that problem. Uh, this one here, calculate the work. So we are trying to find, and what I'm going to put here is just the symbol for that. That's what we're trying to find. Accomplished by moving a, so we have a number here and kilograms. Kilograms are the units, of course, for mass. Lowercase m is the variable symbol for mass. So we have 3.0 kilograms. Distance, we have a delta D, which is equal to 20 meters. Again, notice how I'm writing the units down all along here. Time, the change in time, delta T is equal to 30 seconds. So if we're asked to calculate work, well, remember that work is equal to force times distance. Well, we have a distance here, but we don't have a force. But if you do recall, we also know that the units for work are kilograms, which we have, times meter squared, which we have, and divided by seconds squared, which we have. So really, all I'm asking you to do is think a little bit about this equation here and what it is that really makes up the individual units for work. Of course, it's simpler to just talk about this in terms of joules or Newton meters, but using this information and understanding these units for work, we can just take these numbers and we can plug it into this equation. So we have our 3.0. Again, I'm writing the units down all throughout here, never miss the units. Meters, we have 20 meters. We're going to square that. And then in the denominator, we have our 30 seconds. So I'm putting brackets in here. It's everything inside the brackets that's going to be squared. So the 30 is squared and the seconds is squared. And the same at the top, the 20 is squared. And also the meters is going to be squared as well. So if you do go ahead and plug all of these numbers into your calculator, what you do end up with, and to the correct number of significant digits, is 1.3 joules. Okay, we take a look at our most precise number that we're given, which is the 3.0. Trailing zero is significant. It has two sig digs. And that's why our final answer should also have two significant digits. Let's just take a look as well at the graphical methods for determining work. The first thing I'll point out that always seems to cause a little bit of confusion, force distance or sometimes it's shown as force position. It's really important to understand that the distance is always on the x-axis. And the force, then, is always on the y axis. So we're going to see that consistently throughout in your textbook and in the problems that you do have as well. So if we do plot this graph here with distance on the x axis in meters, force in newtons on the y axis, and we can see this line here. And what this says is that over a duration of 
12 meters, we've applied a consistent force of five meters over that entire length from zero to 12 meters. So if we want to calculate the amount of work, it is equal to the area under the force distance graph. So if, here we just have a horizontal line and it ends right here. So that means if I go down here, that's to 12. Everything in here, of course, is the area and that is equal to work. Why is that equal to work? Well, the way that you calculate an area of a rectangle is of course, well, I have it down here, the length times the width. So here, the length is going to be along our x-axis and notice that it's force. And our width is along the x-axis and it is for distance. So if you calculate area, it is length times width, which is really force times distance, which of course is equal to work. And that is why the area under this graph is going to be equal to the amount of work. So all I need to do is take the length, the five newtons that we have on the y-axis, the 12 meters, the distance that we have on the x-axis, multiply those together, and that gives us our 60 joules. I don't have that necessarily to the correct number of significant digits. If we take a look at these numbers here, if we're going strictly by the numbers that we have on there, then probably this should be recorded to one significant digit. Different shape graph, but uh, really the same thing that we're doing. The only difference here is that instead of a rectangle, we have half a rectangle. So we want half of the area of a rectangle. And to calculate the area of a rectangle, it is, well, right here, one half base times height is usually the way that we talk about it. So if I draw a line going down here, what we want is all of the area underneath that blue line up until my red line, and that is the amount of work. Once again, it's equal to our height, which is the force, times our change in distance, which is the base, and that's going to give us work. So it is going to be our base times height, but again, because this is a triangle and not a rectangle, we're going to be dividing it by two. So our base, 24 meters. Our height, 30 meters, times one half, is going to give us, again, not to the correct number of sig digs, but directly from the graph, 360 joules. Sometimes you get an odd-shaped graph as well. So this one here, we don't have a straight line horizontally or going on any other angle. So how do we actually go ahead and calculate the area under this? Well, we need to do a little bit more of an estimate in this case. And what we're going to do is calculate the area for one of these grid squares. So in this case here, it's pretty simple. So what we have for our width of this is one, and our height is two. So simply one times two is our force times our distance is the amount of work for one of these grids, and that is equal to then two joules. So now what we're going to do for this odd shaped graph is we're going to count all of the squares underneath, or almost square, rectangle it looks like in this case, all of them that are at least half underneath. So this one here is not half underneath, so we're not going to count that one. This one is at least half underneath, we're going to count that. We're not going to count this little one here, but we're going to count this one. This one here looks like it's, oh, just about exactly half, so we'll count that one. We'll definitely count this one. We'll count this one. We'll count this one, and we'll count all of the other ones. So let's do just that. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. I don't know if I miscounted there because I have 17 down below. Let's do that again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. I have 18 here and 17 down below. I'm going to go with the 17. Maybe I wasn't counting uh, this one here the first time. 
at any rate, I'm going to use the 17 because I have that number here. We're going to take that and multiply it by the two joules, and that's going to give us this number here of 34 joules for the estimate of the area underneath of this graph, which is the amount of work.